What's up guys, it's Coach Justin from Ultimate Baseball Training. Welcome back to another video. And you know, when it comes to hitting, there's a lot of old school hitting tips that I really like. And then there are other old school hitting tips that I think a lot of the times cause more harm than good for hitters. And so that's what I wanna talk about in this video right here. I wanna share with you five of what I believe to be the worst old school hitting tips. And I encourage you to avoid these. I think when you do, you're gonna find yourself having more success at the plate as a hitter. So without further ado, Let's jump into it. So the first old school hitting tip that I'm not really a big fan of is see a pitch. Now there's a time and a place for it, of course. If it was just a long inning out on defense or maybe the hitter in front of you swung at the first pitch and made an out, well then yeah, maybe that's a good time for you to see a pitch and to take a pitch. But other than that, you know, what you gotta realize is Flip the script and think about it from a pitcher's perspective, okay? What does every single pitching coach in the nation, heck, in the world, what does every single pitching coach preach to their pitchers? Get ahead early. Get ahead early. You hear it over and over and over again. Get ahead early. They're encouraging them to throw first pitch strikes. No pitchers up there trying to throw a first pitch ball and fall behind in the count. They want to get ahead of you. So if that's their mentality of they're actively trying to throw a strike on the first pitch, then why would we just be passive in the batter's box and let them do it? Let them get an advantage over us. Let them get count leverage. It makes no sense. So every single pitching coach is telling them to get ahead early. Another thing is, you know, the time to see a pitch is in the on-deck circle and in the dugout. But the reality is the first pitch that you see, the first pitch that comes out of the hand, that might be the best pitch that you see your entire at bat. And you're just gonna look at it, you're not even gonna be ready to swing. So I'm a firm believer when you step in the box in a real game, not to say you always have to swing at the first pitch, I'm not saying that by any means, but I think you need to be ready to go because the other reality is, you know, the higher that you go up in baseball, the less crushable pitches you're gonna get. Pitchers are starting to get better and better and better. So in high school, you might get maybe, I don't know, two crushable pitches every single at bat or most at bats. Uh, you know, you might get more, you might get less, depending on the pitcher, but you might get two in high school. And then in college, you know, you might get one or two, maybe just one good crushable pitch per at bat, maybe two. Right? And then, you know, professionally at that level, you might only get one crushable pitch every single at bat or one every two at bats, something like that. Uh, it's not to say that you're only going to see one strike. You might see more strikes than that, but I'm talking about pitches that you recognize that you're on time for, that you can put into, pl put into play hard, make hard contact, drive the ball with authority. The higher that you go up, the less crushable pitches that you're going to see. So I just don't think it's a good idea for you to see a pitch and that might be the best pitch that you see your entire at bat. So there's a time and a place where it might make sense, but I'm not a huge fan overall of seeing a bunch of pitches. That's for the on-deck circle and in the dugout. When you step in the box, you gotta be ready to hit. Another old school hitting tip that you hear over and over and over that I'm not really a big fan of is let the ball travel. Now, again, if you have a hitter that's consistently way too early, then it might make sense as a verbal cue to tell them, hey, let the ball travel, let the ball get a little bit deeper. So I'm not saying never to use this, but I think sometimes we get carried away. And the important point that I wanna articulate here is you do not literally, you might think that if you're consistently early, you might think about letting the ball get a little bit deeper, but you don't literally wanna let the ball travel and you don't literally wanna hit the ball deep. No matter what location the pitch is in, whether it's inside, middle, or even away, yes, even away, if you look at you know the big league footage, the camera angle from directly above the plate, you'll notice that even on an away pitch, yes, on an away pitch, you let the ball travel further than you would on an inside pitch, but even on an away pitch, good hitters make contact with the ball out in front of the plate. Good hitters hit the ball out front. Okay, so you have to understand, yes, every pitch location has a little bit of a different contact point. If the ball is out here on the outer half of the plate, yes, I gotta let that ball get a little bit deeper on me and I'm gonna hit that ball to the opposite field, all right? But a, a ball that's right over the middle of the plate, I'm actually gonna make contact with that pitch out front and it's gonna be a little bit more out front than my front foot, okay? So on a middle pitch, I would make contact somewhere out here like this, but I'm not really letting the ball literally get deep on me, I'm hitting the ball out front. And then on an inside pitch, that's even further. An inside pitch, I've gotta hit the ball out here because it's, it's inside, and so in order for me to hit that ball and drive that ball, I gotta get the barrel out here, I gotta hit that pitch out here. So inside pitch, we're hitting that the furthest out in front. Middle pitch, we're hitting it a little bit deeper, and away pitch, we're hitting it a little bit deeper still. 
But again, even on the outside pitch, we're still hitting the ball out in front. So let the ball travel again, just be careful with it. Some hitters, I think the verbal cue can benefit them, but for a lot of hitters, you know, they, they take it too literal and they think that literally they're trying to let the ball get deep. It's not the case. Good hitters make contact out in front of the plate. The next old school hitting tip I'm not a big fan of is get on top. And you hear it all the time, get on top, get on top, get on top. Here's why that makes no sense, okay? So if I pick up this baseball here, right, and I let it go, I let it go, what happens? The baseball obviously drops, right? Well, thanks to Sir Isaac Newton, we now understand that there's this thing called gravity. So gravity has this gravitational pull and the further a baseball travels, you can take anything. You can take a baseball, so the further that the baseball travels from the pitcher's hand to the plate, this gravitational pull, the baseball is not going to go in a perfectly straight flat line. Gravity is going to suck that baseball, pull that baseball down towards the ground. That's the way gravity works, right? So the further an object travels, like a baseball or like an arrow flying or like a bullet flying through the air, the further that that thing goes, the more that gravity is going to have an effect and it's going to pull that object down, okay? So that's the first reason. On top of that, okay, so I'm standing here at home plate. Well, if you look out towards the pitcher's mound, it's a mound, right? The pitcher is not standing on a flat surface. He's standing on an elevated surface. And pitchers, you get some sidearm pitchers and some submarine guys, but most pitchers are throwing from up here, right? So they're standing on a higher surface than you as the hitter. They're throwing the ball up here from a higher, higher place, right? And is the catcher, is he standing up like the umpire back here? Is he standing up with his glove up like this or is he down here? He's down here, right? So we've got this gravitational pull that's pulling the baseball down towards the ground and we've got a pitcher on an elevated mound throwing overhand to someone who's down here like this. So what's the baseball going to do? Is it going to travel in on a flat trajectory or is it going to travel on an upward trajectory or is, or is it going to travel on a slightly downward trajectory? I think by now you know the answer is the baseball is coming in on a slight downward plane. So if we achieve our goal of getting on top of the baseball, what's that going to result in? If I, if I get on top of this baseball, the ball's coming down and I hit the top part of the ball and I achieve that goal, what's going to happen? I'm going to hit a ground ball with top spin. That's really not what we want. Or I'm going to miss hit it with a glancing blow and I'm probably going to get so much backspin, not the good kind, so much backspin that it pops up to the catcher. So that's if, and that's only if my timing's perfect because if the ball's coming in like this and I'm swinging and cutting across the ball, my timing has to be perfect to even make contact with the baseball. So that's not really a recipe for success. I encourage you follow Ted Williams advice. He says the best swing is slightly up. That means the best swing, the ball's coming slightly down. The best swing is matching the plane of the pitch for as long as you possibly can. Get your bat on plane as early as possible and stay on plane for as long as possible. But you don't want to swing down and get top spin. You want to match the plane of the pitch and you want to hit the ball you know, in order to hit hard line drives with backspin, you want to hit the ball slightly below the equator. So if this was a globe, we've got the equator, the halfway point here. We want to hit the ball slightly below the equator because that's backspin. If we hit above the equator on top, if we get on top, that's topspin. We want to hit the inside part of the baseball, right? Inside part of the baseball, slightly below the equator. We want to match the plane of the pitch for as long as possible. That's going to give us those hard line drives and home runs with backspin and with carry. But again, if thinking about getting on top works for you, then, then great. A lot of players swear by that. A lot of players think that that's what they're doing. But just in reality, just like letting the ball travel, you don't literally want to let the ball travel. It just could be a, a verbal cue, a mental cue that could help you. Same thing here. If it helps you to think about, well, I, I, I think about you know getting on top and that helps my bat get on plane, cool. Just understand that's not literally what's going on. And you're not literally trying to get on top of the baseball. The fourth old school hitting tip I'm really not a fan of, this one's my favorite or I should say least favorite, is squash the bug, okay? Now the philosophy behind coaches and, and parents teaching this squash the bug theory is, well, they want to encourage their younger hitters to use their lower half more in the swing and get their hips into the baseball swing to generate some more power. So I agree with that philosophy. I think utilizing your lower half, your biggest and strongest muscles, that's a good thing for hitters to do. 
but I think thinking about squashing the bug is the wrong way to go about it. And some people may think I'm splitting hairs here and think, well, it's good to teach younger players. No, I don't think it's good to teach younger players to squash the bug because here's why. Okay, squashing the bug, yes, when you swing a baseball bat, your back foot is not gonna stay in the exact same spot like it's stuck in concrete. There is gonna be some movement. So when I get my hips involved and I swing, my back foot, my back heel is going to come off the ground and there is going to be some turning, some rotation with my back foot. But here's the thing, I'm not thinking about artificially turning that back foot. And here's the other thing, that turning of the back foot, that is a result of something else going on in the swing. In other words, squashing the bug is really not an input, something that you think about doing, it's an output, it's an outcome of other things that happen, AKA your hips violently rotating, that pulls your back hip you know, forward and it pulls your back heel off of the ground and it gets you up on your back toe. You might even notice that your knees pinch together a little bit, okay? So let me show you what I mean by that. I just encourage you to think about, you know, this is something, yes, your back foot is gonna move a little bit, but it's not something that you think about as an input. Think about, okay, I have to squash the bug. No, no, no. That is something that happens as a result of something else in your swing, and I just talked about, it's because your hips are violently rotating into the baseball. So I load and I stride and I get to my launch position here, and when my front heel, I land on like the ball of my foot here, when my front heel drops, my hips start to rotate violently, right? My hips lead the way, my hips are, are violently rotating, and I'm not thinking about you know, anything with this back foot here, but when I do this movement here, I have no choice. This hip is rotating, that causes this hip to start rotating too and start causing it to, to move forward towards the baseball like this. Well, obviously my entire body's connected and so that causes my back heel to come up like this. And as I complete my rotation into the baseball, I come up on my back toe and you might see my knees, my back knee actually pinching forward towards my front knee, and that's a great sign of good hip rotation. So in slow motion here, my front heel drops, my hips begin to rotate like this, that pulls my back heel, pulls my back side forward, my back hip, which pulls my back heel off the ground. I get up onto my toe here like this. At the point of contact, you might notice that this back knee, again, sort of drifts forward like this, that's totally fine. Okay, so yes, that back foot is gonna have a little bit of movement, a little bit of turn, whatever, but I just think it's totally wrong to think about that as something you're trying to do, something you're trying to coach. Again, you might think that I'm splitting hairs here, but instead, if you wanna think about a bug, I think a better cue to tell your hitters to incorporate their lower half more, if you wanna think about a bug, think about a bug under your front heel and smash the bug with your front heel, okay? So again, we get into our launch position, or our stance here like this, and we load and stride to our launch position. I land on my ball of my foot, not flat-footed, not up on my toe, but not flat-footed. My foot lands slightly open, about 45 degrees, and then it's that, that, that bug is under my front heel, and when that heel drops like this, then I rotate around my axis, and my hips violently rotate into the ball, and then eventually I come up onto that back toe, and that back foot moves a little bit. But don't think about squashing the bug. The last old school hitting tip that I think a lot of times causes more harm than good is go the other way. You hear coaches all the time talk about hit the ball the other way and stay inside the baseball. And while I do agree that you wanna have an inside the ball bat path, you don't wanna get around the baseball because when we get around the baseball and get disconnected, we're gonna to have top spin, hit a lot of rollover ground balls. While I agree with that, we do wanna have an inside the ball bat path. We do not wanna hit everything the other way. We do not wanna go the other way all the time. And so I think it's fine for hitters who you know, are hitting everything to their pull side, they're getting way too pull happy. Sure, think about you know hitting the ball the other way, but sometimes I think it's a mistake because a lot of young hitters think that, well, I need to stay inside everything and I need to hit everything the other way, and they're really hindering you know, their power at the plate because you know, every single pitch, you should really hit the ball where it's pitched. Every single pitch should have a different contact point and you should hit every single pitch location to a different part of the field. Not trying to take inside pitches to the opposite field, but inside pitches, we should be pulling those. Middle pitches, we should be staying in the middle of the field. And yes, on those away pitches, those are the pitches that you go to the opposite field with. But the reality is, most hitters out there are gonna have 
significantly more power to their pull side and up the middle as opposed to to the opposite field. Why is that? Well, I think the biggest reason why that it is, is is because hitters are more connected on an inside pitch or on a middle pitch. On an away pitch, you want to stay as connected as possible, but you have to get the bat out there to reach the ball. So you're going to be, you know, by definition, by that, you're going to be a little bit uh, less connected and you're not going to be in as powerful of a, of a hitting position. You still want to be able to drive the ball the other way with authority, but most hitters are going to have more power to their pull side and up the middle. So why on earth would we, you know, knowing that, try to hit everything to the opposite field when mo where most hitters have the least amount of power? Makes no sense, right? So I encourage you when you're doing your T work and BP and all that sort of stuff, try to think about staying in the middle of the field. You really want to avoid the extremes. You want to avoid the lines. You don't want to get too pull happy. You don't want to get too other way happy. I would encourage you to stay middle of the field, gap to gap in your practice and think about that as your approach in real games and then let the pitcher dictate it based on where he throws the ball. If he throws you an inside pitch, you're going to hit the ball further out in front, you're going to pull it. If he throws you a pitch over the middle of the plate, you're going to stay in the middle of the field and if he throws you an outside pitch, you're going to let the ball travel a little bit more and you're going to hit the ball hard to the opposite field. But don't take everything the other way and sacrifice your power and sacrifice you know, your consistency at the plate because you're trying to take an inside pitch and dink it the other way. On an inside pitch, pull it and hit it over the fence. I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, please do me a favor, hit that thumbs up button. I'd really appreciate that. And be sure to subscribe to the channel. That way you never miss any of our upcoming baseball videos. We're coming out with new videos all the time. And we've got a ton of videos already on the channel that you can go back and watch. So be sure to like this video, be sure to subscribe. And last thing, be sure to go download the free contact point checklist that I put together for you. It's 100% free. And this checklist is gonna make sure that you look picture perfect at the point of contact in your baseball baseball swing so that you can develop some more consistency at the plate. You can hit the ball harder and further and you can have a lot more fun on the field and a lot more confidence. That's what it's all about and it's 100% free so all you have to do just click on the link down below in the description or I'll also leave that in the first comment so just click on that link. Go download it for free right now. Thank you so much for watching this video and I'll see you in the next one.